Hello all. In this session, we are going to discuss CSMA technique. In pure aloha and slotted aloha, we have seen that there is no mechanism to check whether the channel is free or busy. And it is absurd that without knowing whether the channel is free or busy, the stations are sending the data. Obviously, the throughput is going to be very less. So there is a technique which is introduced known as carrier sense multiple access. As its name suggests, the carrier or the channel will be sensed by the stations before taking the decision of sending the data. So station senses the channel or listens to the channel. That is, it checks whether the channel is idle or busy. If the channel is found to be busy, then the station refrains from sending the data. And if it is found to be idle, then depending on the protocol, it will take further actions. Please understand that this CSMA is a technique. CSMA itself is not a complete protocol. Some protocol, which we are going to study further, protocols make use of CSMA technique. So let us proceed. This is the vulnerable time or sensitive time in CSMA. Now, in case of CSMA, the stations will know if someone has already sent the data by sensing the channel. So for an example, station A sends the data at T1. T1 is nothing but time one, uh, time instead one. It will take some time to reach B. That means there is a lag of receiving the signal. Obviously, A has sent the data on at time instant T1. B is at some distance from A. Even if B senses the channel, it will come to know that someone has already sent the data after some time, after some lag. There is a big lag in C because C is far from A. So even if data is sent by T1 at, uh, by A at T1, C will come to know only at this particular time. If during this time, you the during this particular time lag time, C senses the channel, C will think that nobody has sent, sent the data and channel is free. And so C will send the data and there will be a collision. So D will sense it here. D is the farthest station from A. So this time, whatever it takes to reach the signal or data from A to D, is nothing but propagation time. And so vulnerable time in case of CSMA is propagation time because whenever the station tries to sense the channel, it will listen to the signal sent by A only after some time lag. So this is about the CSMA technique. There are three methods under CSMA which are used and those are called as persistent techniques. These techniques are called as one persistent, non-persistent and p-persistent. So let us try to understand what these methods are. First diagram uppermost, you can see that one persistent technique is depicted. What one persistent technique is, just a minute, in one persistent technique, the channel is sensed continuously by the stations. So at every time instance, the station whosoever wants to send the data will keep on sensing the channel. Please understand if the station doesn't want to send any data, it will not sense the channel. So for this much time, the station finds the channel busy. At this particular time instance, at this time instance, the station finds that the channel is idle. And at this time instance, the station can send the data. 
This is called as one persistent. The meaning of word persistence is continuous operation of uh, a particular task. So here we are sensing or the stations are sensing the channel continuously and so it is known as one persistent method. In this method, as soon as the channel is found idle, the station will transmit the data. The second method is called as non-persistent. That means the sensing task is not continuously done. Here at this time instance, the station is sensing the channel. If it is found to be busy, it will wait for a random time and then it will sense again. Unlike one persistence method where continuous checking is going on. In non-persistent method, the channel is not sensed continuously, but after waiting for a random time. After sensing at this point time instance, again, if it finds it busy, it will wait again for a random time. You can check this wait period and this wait period are not same. So the waiting period is random and not fixed time slot. After this, whenever it senses, if it finds it idle, then it will transmit the data. That is called as non-persistent method. What are the disadvantages of these methods? Here, we need to continuously sense the channel, continuously check whether the channel is busy or idle. In this case, after waiting for a random time. Now here, actually at this time instance, only the channel has become idle. The stations would have been able to send the data at that time instance only. But due to random waiting period, it had to wait for this much extra time. And then at this time, the station is sending the data. So this is a wastage of resource in case of non-persistence method, non-persistent method. There is another method which is called as P-persistent. This P is nothing but a probability value. This probability value is associated with every data frame and it is calculated depending on the various parameters like current traffic, number of stations on the channel and so on. In this method, again, this is a persistence method. So the station will continuously sense the channel. As soon as it finds it idle, unlike one persistent method, it will wait for a fixed time slot. Okay. And after waiting for a fixed time slot, it will sense it again. Now, why doesn't it send it here only? That depends on the probability value, which is given by this P. This probability value will decide whether that data frame falls in the category of uh, frames which are to be sent or otherwise. For example, if probability value P is say 0.7, that is 70%. So 70% of the times, the time frame, uh, the data frames will be sent at that particular instance. If that value is 0.3, if the value of P is 0.3, then it will not be sent. 30% of the times, the frame will not be sent at that time instance and the station will wait for fixed time slot and then sense again. After sensing it, again it checks the probability value. If it falls uh, in the specific uh, range, then it will send the frame or otherwise again it will reframe. Again it will wait for a time slot. Now in this case, these time slots are fixed. These are not random. These are fixed time slots. Okay, so this is a prob there is a probability outcome that does not allow or allows the transmission of the frames as soon as the channel is found idle. So these three are the techniques which are used in CSMA. Let us revise them once again. One persistent, it is actually logical to remember the names. One persistent is a type of P persistent only where the probability value is one. That means 100% of the times whenever the channel is found idle, the station will send the data frame. So that is one persistent. 
after sensing continuously, whenever it finds it idle, station will send delay data. In case of P persistent, after continuously sensing the data, uh, the channel, as soon as it finds it idle, it will check the probability value. If that data frame falls in the category of frames to be sent, it will be sent. Otherwise, it will refrain from sending and wait for a fixed time slot. This process continues till the probability value allows the station to send the data. Then third method is non-persistent. Here, the channel is not consistently checked, continuously sensed. It will be sensed at the random intervals, but there is a disadvantage of wasting the resource, that is time. So these three methods are used in CSMA technique. We can see its depiction in the diagrammatic format also. In this case, we have one persistent, non-persistent and p-persistent method. First is one persistent. If channel is busy, it will continuously keep on checking the channel. If found idle, station can transmit. Second diagram, non-persistent. Channel is checked. If channel is busy, it will wait randomly and then again check the channel. Channel checking is not continuous. Whenever it finds it idle, station can transmit. In case of P persistent method, the channel is continuously sensed. If it is found to be idle, probability outcome will be checked. If probability outcome is less than or equal to the value of P, the stations can transmit. If it is greater than P, then it will have to wait for a fixed time slot and then again check whether the channel is busy or idle. This is called as CSMA technique. Now we have come to an end of this session. And in the next session, we will discuss about a protocol which uses CSMA technique and the name of the protocol is CSMA CD. Thank you.